Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you stopped in. Uh, this report that I've got going right now is uh, Congregational Democrats are applying pressure to Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts regarding new allegations that Justice Samuel Alito leaked the result of an important 2014 case to conservative activists. Now if you hear noises, my kitties are playing. Okay. And they're running around and having a heyday. And uh, a letter sent to Roberts on Sunday by Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, Democrat, I guess that's Rhode Island, and Representative Hank Johnson, Democrat of Georgia, said that the allegations against Al Alito, and that is A-L-I-T-O, Alito, Al Alito, point out an ex uh, excusable Supreme Court loophole in ethics rules. Alito has strongly denied that he has leaked any court information or decisions and said the new allegation is completely false. The Democratic lawmaker referred to a July letter sent by a former conservative activist turned pro-abortion adv advocate to Roberts making the allegation. The letter claims that Alito discussed the result the court would reach in Burwell versus Hobby Lobby stores and company before the decision was officially published. White House and Johnson wrote that the new allegation only deepens our concerns about the lack of inadequate ethical and legal guardrails at the court. They went on to demand that Roberts' disclosure whether the court has opened an investigation into the allegation that Alto leaked the Hobby Lobby ruling. The Democrats also called on Roberts to answer questions about whether justices have been provided dinners and travels as gifts for activists who might be seeking influence into decisions and whether donations to the Supreme Court Historical Society are being used to influence cases. Alito has denied any leaking of other improper activity in the Hobby Lobby case involving former consecutive religious activist Robert Schenck or conservative donor Gail Wright. Alito said that the allegation that the Wrights were told the outcome of the decision in the Hobby Lobby case or the authorship of the opinion of the court by me or my wife is completely false. Alito described his relationship with the Wrights as incidental to their strong support of the Supreme Court Historical Society. He said that he and his wife have had a casual, purely, purely social relationship with the Wrights. Alito also said that he has never detected any effort by the Wrights to influence him or to obtain any confidential court information. He said that he would have strongly objected if they had done so. Senate Jury, uh, Judiciary Committee Chairman Dick Durbin, Democrat of Illinois, has joined in the Democrat chorus to cast a poor light on the court and its conservative members who voted this year to overturn the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision on abortion. Durbin said, that it is unacceptable that justices on the Supreme Court are exempted from the judicial codes of ethics. No public disclosure, disclosure have yet been made about any findings by the court in its investigation of the leak this year of the draft opinion in the Dobbs v. Jackson we uh, women's health case that overturned Roe, R -O -E, Roe when it was officially released in June. Nice picture there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Lisa Murkowski defeats Trump-endorsed Kelly Shabaka in Alaska. Senator Lisa Murkowski, a, re a, re a Republican from Arkansas. Well, it's AK. That's not Arkansas. Has been projected as the winner of Alaska's. Well, maybe that's Alaska there. Winner abbreviation. I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen abbreviation of Alaska. 
whatever, has been projected as the winner of Alaska's Senate race, beating Trump-endorsed Kelly Shabaska, Shabaka in the state's ranked choice election after the state tabulated uh, voters' second and third rankings on Wednesday. Murakowski was cens censored by the Alaska Republican Party in March of 2021, asked to leave office after voting to impeach former President Donald Trump, finished the right choice election with 53.7% or 135,972 votes compared to Tabasca, Tabasca's 46.3% or 117,299 votes. Yeah, so there's 53.7% uh, and then Tabaka is 46.3%. Okay, Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski, Republican, wins the re-election after the ranked choice voting instant runoff tabulation. She defeats Trump-endorsed Republican challenger Kelly. Okay. The pro-impeachment 21-year incumbent nearly won the highly contested Senate race likely due to Alaska's recent decision to switch to an open, ranked choice voting system, which Murkowski supported instituting in 2020. According to Brent Bart's news, the voter system ultimately protects incumbents by allowing the Republican Party to cannibalize its vote while permitting Democrats to vote for Republicans. Murakowski Muravowski's share of the vote shot up after Democrat candidate Pat Chesbro was eliminated from the race, as the Republican incumbent, incumbent received a significant share of the second choice votes from Chesbro's Democrat uh, supporters, according to Alaska news outlet KTOO. Murakowski was also aided with $9 million dollars from the Senate's Leadership Fund, a super PAC backed by Senator Mitch McConnell, who was also censor censored by the Alaskan Republican Party back in October for attacking Murakowski's opponent, Kelly Tishbaka. The money donated by McConnell's super PAC PAC was used to attack the Tishbaka in campaign ads. Over the last two years, Murakowski has been accused of dismissing the values of her voter base and enabling the Biden administration. Since President Joe Biden took office, the Alaska senator has voted nine times with the Democrats, pledged to continue to do so upon being re-elected. I'm not a fan of this administration, Murakowski claimed in September. I think a lot of their policies have hurt us. But you know what? They're in office. They're going to be in office for the next two years. I'm working with them to advance things, she said, referring to Biden's massive federal spending packages. Tabaska, Tishbaka has called Murakowski out for enabling Biden and the Democrats. My goodness. There's quite a little thing going on there, isn't there? Oh, well. I don't know. Well, I'm on to my last one from the desktop. And we'll open it up. And this will be my last video for the night. Yeah. I've did quite a few. And uh, so I may not do any tomorrow. I might take a break. And, uh, well, I don't want that one. I've already did that one. Let me move my camera over. Here we go. Got to open up this one. Move my camera back. And uh, I have been fighting the glare on my glasses. Uh, December will be my fourth month of making uh, YouTube videos. And uh, I have trouble with the computer. I have trouble with my phone. I have trouble with my uh, camera sometimes. 
but um, I bought one of these uh, lights, round lights, and hopefully it's a clip-on, it will go on my monitor, and that will cut off the glare from my glasses, and I won't know any more until I get it, because I'm new, I don't understand any of it, my uh, great-granddaughter's got one, but uh, I haven't caught her or tied her down long enough to talk to her on the phone to tell me how I'm supposed to use it. So, <laughs> we'll see how that works. But I'll be happy to get rid of the glare off my glasses. Yes. Let's go down here now. Uh, scandal update. Whoa. Supreme Court catches Joe Biden give this a legal order. Now, I hope I haven't did this one. I hope this isn't a repeat. I keep them in a folder, but um, I should make a list where I can keep it by my uh, desk here, on my desk, so I can see which ones I've done, which ones I haven't. But it's going to take a big notebook, I think, <laughs> a big ledger of some kind. <laughs> Joe Biden oversees one of the most scandalous plagued administrations in American history. The regime's lawless abuses of power are piling up. And there's lots of pictures on this one which they don't show up. So they're probably copyrighted. So I don't have to worry about getting in trouble. Uh, so I have to scroll down until I get to the lines I want to read. But now the Supreme Court caught Joe Biden giving this illegal order. President Joe Biden tried to buy the votes of young Americans, Americans with a bluntly illegal scheme to bail out up to $20,000 in student loan debt for all individuals making up to $125,000 a year. Now see, it was $10,000. So now it's up to $20,000. That means that taxpayers would be on the hook for a $40,000 bailout for each married couple who received gender studies de degrees from Harvard and make up to $250,000 combined annually. There is no possible inter interpretation of the United States Constitution that would allow the President to unliterally set fiscal policy. In fact, even soon-to-be former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi admitted that the Constitution is rather clear on the subject when she conceded that the president lacked the authority to unilaterally cancel student loan debt. That's because the Constitution clearly states that all spending bills must originate in the House of the Representatives. But President Biden cite, cited the HEROES Act, dash A-911 era law to grant relief in the event of an emergency to steal hundreds of billions of dollars from the Treasury dole it out to groups who predominantly voted Democrat and then make non-college educated Americans or those responsible enough to pay their own bills pick up the tab. My oh my oh my oh my. U.S. District Judge Mark T. Pittman agreed and stopped Biden's illegal student loan bailout scheme, ruling it violated violated the constitutional separation of powers. The court is not blind to the current political division in our country, Judge Pittman wrote in his ruling, but it is fundamental to the survival of our republic that the separation of powers as outlined in our Constitution be preserved. And having interpreted the HEROES Act, the court holds that it does not provide clear congregational authorization for the program proposed by the Secretary, the judge added. Ultimately, the Biden regime has taken their case to the Supreme Court. On the merits, the plan falls squarely within the plain text of the Secretary's uh, statutory authority, Biden Solicitor General Elizabeth Prelogger argued. Indeed, the entire purpose of the HEROES Act is to authorize the Secretary to grant student loan related relief to at-risk Bowers because of national emergency, precisely what the Secretary did here, she added. 
Okay. On two prior occasions, the Supreme Court shot down President Biden's unconstitutional federal vaccine mandate and national eviction moratorium. Just like his other past power grabs, Joe Biden's student loan bailout is another attempt to bind Democrats' votes and pleasing their base, even though everyone knows it's illegal. Stay tuned to the conservative underground news for any updates to this ongoing story. May you all, wherever you are at, have an awesome day ahead of you, an awesome night of rest and peace of mind. And remember, you're awesome, and you're a blessing, and give someone else a blessing. And thank you all for watching, and hopefully that little light that I'm going to get will take the glare off my glasses. If not, I don't know what else to do. So, good night, everybody. Iowa time is 1.51 a.m. here, and I've got to do some more work. So, so long, and I'll see you later. God bless.